Welcome back to the Agro Adventures podcast. Today, we're thrilled to have Kareem Abul Naga, founder and CEO of Practice Benefit Corp with us. You also had some incredible internships. I, I'm, I'm guessing at college, right? You ended up working at Goldman Sachs and BlackRock early in your career. Uh, what? T- tell me a little bit about that and you know, working at those two major financial institutions. What are some of the things that you learned and, and where did you at that point decide, no, this is not the path I want to go. I want to do something more. When you grow up poor, you want to be rich. I mean, at least that was the case in, in my scenario. I'm not saying everyone. I'm 18 years old when I started. I'm not thinking this is my life's work. I really cared about it. I cared about the inequality. I've always been someone who's motivated by social justice and making sure everyone at least has an opportunity. So I was compelled to do something. And I remember one of my first mentors I went to and told I was starting this. And he said, uh, Jay-Z says that you can't help the poor if you're one of them. And one of his mentors told him, like, you can't write a check if you haven't made one. And both of those things were true. I was poor and I hadn't made a check yet. Um, But I was at Cornell. And though it, it didn't seem like much, I already had so much more than the kids I was growing up with. Got so it. I, to me, it was a, it was a no brainer. I was going to start something. Hopefully over time, I'll make more money and I'll be able to support and give back that way. Um, but I was sitting at BlackRock. I remember my junior year during onboarding or orientation and they're playing the BlackRock founding story. And the entire time I'm sitting there, I'm like thinking about the founding story of practice and what that looks like. And um, by the time I got to the end of the summer, uh, they had, they told us, they were like, there were a hundred interns there were 10,000 applicants. And then of those 100, they made offers to 40 of them. And I was one of the 40 lucky enough to get an offer. And I was sitting there and I'm doing the math. And I'm like, you know, what is it that they see in me that I don't see in myself yet? And I had a lot of alumni at Cornell who were coming back who would say, like, take the risk now. Uh, you have nothing to lose. Um, you're not going to do it later when you have a mortgage, you have a baby, you have a child. And we were just talking about that a little bit earlier. You're just not going to be able to take that kind of risk. And I believe them. And, you know, at the time, it was a really difficult decision. I alienated some of those mentors who felt like this was the path. I should absolutely go and take that money. My family needed it. It was going to make a big difference for them. And I don't, I don't know why I thought this, but at the time, I was like, you know, a $70,000 a year job with benefits and all those things is not life-changing amount of money. Yes, it's a lot more money than anything I've had, but it's not going to pull my family out of poverty. Like there's just not, just not enough to do that. So will my mom notice the difference if I don't take this job offer and, and I go and take a little bit more risk and do this? Like probably not. So I turned down the offers. Um, I went headstrong into now building this education company, hoping that one day would be growing and in the direction it's in today.